changing the snow pulse o-ring. When you purchase an o-ring kit, inside you'll find an o-ring user guide, an extra pin, stickers, grease, the o-rings themselves, and a little tool that will help you take the o-ring off and put the o-ring on the piston. So the first thing you'll notice when you unhook your snow pulse cylinder is that this arm has been allowed to move over because the pin has been pulled out. So when the pin gets pulled out, the piston in here moves over and air shoots up out over these stickers. So the stickers that were in place for preventing moisture from getting in the cylinder are now ripped. So what we're going to do is open this, get at the piston, change the little o-ring, and then change the stickers. So in order to open this, it's you may be able to do it by hand, just begin twisting it off. If at the beginning it's too stiff, you can use a crescent wrench just to give it a little tweak to get start getting it going. So here I go, starting to open this. Whoa. There we go. So inside here, you have the piston, and on the end here is the little o-ring. So what I'm going to do is take that o-ring off and put that o-ring on. So once you've got the piston out, you'll probably want to use a bit of Kleenex or paper towel just to take the grease off so it makes your life easier. The next step, I'm going to use this little tool that comes with the o-ring kit and I'm going to, what I'm going to do is pinch with my forefinger and thumb here to create a little hole there, a little space and I'm going to stick the pointy end through and then I'm just going to take that o-ring off. So to put your new o-ring on, you can either roll it on by just rolling it on your finger between your thumb and forefinger, rolling it on to get it into that space, or you can use this tool, the opposite end, so you'd slide this over the pointy end and start working it down this direction on to the piston here. So here, the next step I'm doing is I'm going to just peel off this tape. So it's easier to peel off this tape when the cylinder is at warm temperatures, not immediately after you've blown the cylinder. So I'm just peeling off the tape here, like so, and then this tape here gets peeled off. The next step is putting the piston into the cylinder. So I'm going to use a bit of grease It's quite a bit, a bit too much, so about that much Lube it up Then I'm going to put it right back in, so o-ring goes in O-ring in, not out, in In if it doesn't click right in, another thing you can do is just gently press down on it on a hard surface and that will get it in there. So the next step is putting this piece back on. So I'm going to put a little bit of grease on the threads there. The reason we use grease is because the snow pulse cylinder is mechanical so like any machine we want to keep things well lubricated so they work properly. So here, to start, that lock nut there is up against that hot tub looking thing there. So I'm going to put that in here and begin to twist it in. Righty tighty, all the way. Okay, so this can sometimes be the tricky part. So I want this to be, this part needs to be in line with this. So I'm going to back it off to here and then begin tightening the lock nut 
and then working them together like that. Like so. Another thing you can do is if you end up locking it on an angle, you can use your crescent wrench to gently straighten it out like that. So the next step is taking this movable arm and putting it back in to hold the pin in place. So this hole here is going to line up with the hole in the middle here. And you're going to use the pin to do that. So if you haven't already taken the pin off the end of the cable, you can do that now and get your pin back. And then what you do is you take the end of the pin, the non-threaded part, push it over and here you're going to have to really look to make sure that the holes are lined up in order for the pin to go in correctly. So the next step is going to be putting on the tape. So I take a circle tape and put it at the top here. Try and smooth it out so there's not too many air bubbles. And then I'm going to do my rectangular tape. That's going to go here. and then around. So you'll see here on the gauge it's down at the black which is zero so it means it's empty. What we want to do is fill the snowball cylinder with dry compressed air up into the green 3000 psi. So if you have done any of what I just showed you incorrectly the cylinder will not hold air. So the main things to think about are o-ring in first and making sure that that arm is in place before you put the pin in. If you haven't done those things correctly then the cylinder won't hold air. So when you're filling the snow pulse cylinder what happens is this little part here is attached to the main mother tank let's say using a paintball quick link. So what you want to be sure of is that this cylinder is filled quite slowly. So whoever's filling your cylinder, let them know not to blast 3000 in right off the bat, but just to let air in slowly and allow the gauge to increase slowly getting up to 3000. Once you've got up to 3000, you'll feel that the cylinder gets quite warm. At that point, you want to let the cylinder cool down and then you're going to top it up. So main things to think about go to a paintball place or a scuba shop to get it filled with dry compressed air two fill it slowly three make sure you let it cool down and then top it up and then you're good to go